drink, sir. We can't do anything in places like this without helicopters. This time on Timber Titans. Talk bang. Bang. It's totally random. Oh boy. You need to keep these helicopters flying. There's a big hole in the road. It needs to be dealt with now. Holy smokes. Wow. We need to be working on a minimum of two loads a day. Oh! West coast of Vancouver Island. Coming to the right or to the left? The heli logging crew from Integrated Operations is salvaging high value cedar logs in the Narrows. There's some right under the nose now they're tipping against the left tree line. Yeah, right under the grapple there. We're going into old blocks and picking up wood that's been down for anywhere from five years to a hundred years. These trees are lying on the ground in challenging positions. We can't do anything in places like this without helicopters. Helicopters lift logs straight up in the air and straight down to the land. So there's absolutely no impact on the ground. It's just tremendously environmentally sensitive logging. To fly the logs off the mountain, Integrated has contracted a Sikorsky S-64 air crane, piloted by Mark and Bill. This one's got a couple in it. I think I worked with Mark and Bill first over 20 years ago. Bacon. Uh, bacon and French toast. They're great to work with, and they work really well together. You're over that one, like there's two right there. There's one to the right of it, one up and down the hill. They got the experience. Keep it coming right. They got the skill to grab and go and to make our operation super efficient. Yippee. Ooh. Look like professionals. Huh? Because you know, I love to change the world. I'll oh, shut up, Lake. Come on. No, you won't. Yeah, you're probably right. Everything about heli logging is maximizing efficiency. You need to keep these helicopters flying to get our job done before they move on to the next one. And with only four days left before the S-64 is scheduled to leave for another job, success in the Narrows depends on finding the heaviest cedar logs they can fly. We're also near the completion of the project, so we're looking for the last of the logs that we're going to salvage. So there's a massive one in the gully right here. There should be two side by side there. And then just if Les does a hunt around while you're bucking them, that'd be perfect. Armed with their chainsaws, the hill crews are dispatched across the block to prep logs for flight. Once the guys are on the ground, then becomes the process of bucking and ripping that we keep some nice wood flying off the hill and allows us to get that stuff to market. With the hill crews hard at work, Sig and Les join Kurt in the 206 to hunt for more logs. We're going to go look for Easter eggs, try to turn them into dollars in the bank account. They're going deeper into the block. Uh, helicopter, Mike Ekapapa. Searching areas they could have never considered logging before the arrival of the S-64. We do what's called a slow and low but we find high slow and low over a previously harvested block looking for those logs. And when we see them, we usually use digital mapping and we'll mark them as we're flying over. Like that windfall there, Les, I take that one right. There's a few here, there's two right there, see them right there? Yep. Uh, we're gonna grab some of those for sure. Some of those trees have been down a long time and because of their cedar, they decay at a way different rate than everything else, and we're able to salvage some of that wood, and that's why we're there, because that's where the value is. And on the right, wherever you can land up here. If we find something that suggests we should land and get out and do the more detailed hunt, that's what we do. All right, guys. You have a good day. You too. This is an area that was harvested, we're guessing, about five years ago, and we found a lot of trees that when the fallers fell on the started to slide down the hill and they just kept going and going and going and so they ended up in the bottom where the 
logging crew couldn't get at them because a lot of them are in places where we can't buck them. They're literally hanging over a bluff. But now that we've got the Sikorsky S64, we think we can pick them up. But first, Sig and Last must locate the logs and tag them for the S64. So you can get a sense of how nasty the canyon is there. Okay, let's see where we're standing. Yep. You go, yeah, it looks like about 150, 200 meters upstream from you. Oh, I'll guarantee you there's some runaway wood down into the creek there. Okay. There's a tremendous amount of labor involved in finding these trees. You might only find, you know, 10 logs in a big area and other areas will find 20 or 30. So it's a lot of ground we're covering to get these salvage logs out of the forest. Well, you do have to be a bit of an adrenaline junkie to work out here. Pushing deeper into the block means fighting uncharted ground. Yes, brutal, brutal conditions. Feels like you're dog paddling in barbed wire hiking through this thick brush. But it's the only way to get the biggest payloads before the S64 leaves for its next job. Oh. Okay, where do we go from here? Good to go. Hey, thanks, Ed. Two hours north of Prince George. Does Cho Logging rallies the troops for the last push on the holder? Two pickups clear here, one. Bringing in these extra trucks kind of help us get everything cleaned up today. We want to make sure we get all this wood out of here. Looking at the forecast, we're getting warm weather within the next day or so. Yeah, it's a big deal. If we can't get all the loads out, then that's going to be a big expense. We're going to have to leave it until the weather allows us to come back to all the wood out. Along with the logs, Kevin needs to get the machines off the block before the road is too soft for the low beds. Bill, you coming out with the processor? I am six downloaded wide. Be one of the last ones to uh, finish up for the season. Once we get all the equipment into the mechanics to work on and get them ready for summer shift. Feels a little spongy right now. We need to take them in, get them all checked over, and see what we need to do for repairs. I need a duck here. Oh, no. I go to take off, it starts rolling back. What, it won't lift it there? It doesn't seem to want to, no. Uh... A loaded logging truck is stuck on the last hill out of the block. I don't know if something's going on with the truck at one kilometer. We can't get up the hill. The sun is on it right now, so it's slimy. That's what it is, I bet you. Hey, we still got loaded trucks coming out behind us. We gotta get this road clear. There he is. Oh yeah, there's no getting by him, no. No, sir. Let's stop right here, kind of out of the way. He's hauling uh, major weight, probably 75,000 gross. Coffee, Kevin? Yeah, let him know I'm coming with a skitter. Damn road's blocked. Half a dozen trucks back there waiting. I feel the pressure when you want things to go smoothly, and if there's one little hiccup, sometimes it just messes everything up. Yeah, the last thing we need right now. Go to take off and starts rolling back. In northeastern British Columbia. Got a coffee, Kevin? A loaded logging truck can't make the steep climb up the muddy block road. So when the truck's stuck, we're gonna use whatever machine's available at that time to get him out. Come around behind him and give him a push. He's got lots of tail hanging out that back end, eh? Yeah. When something goes wrong, I'm not hollering and screaming at people. I'll go over and find out what happened or what needs to be done to try to solve the problem for all of us. 
up, the haulers can get back to work. Mine's all down, one bridge. I gotta get rolling and uh, get back up here so I can get the machine out. So we're gonna be very busy. The road is a mess. I need things to run smoothly these last few days to get all the wood out. 300 kilometers northwest of the holder. I've been up here for 61 days straight, I think, now. Breakup is in full effect on Dozcho's second block to Toddy. Road maintenance is a, is a crucial key to the, to the whole business, keeping an eye out for washouts and stuff like that. Jeremy is nearing the end of his first season as block supervisor. I was hired to run a buncher. I seen the company, they needed a real supervisor, someone to lead. So I actually fought for the job. Pick up up at five. There's no more trucks coming down, hey guys? Well, it's quiet, so no news is good news, I'm thinking. Does Joe's trucks are done hauling for the day. So Jeremy is checking the condition of the road before the next round arrives. Five up or... I did, and I curved seven down. No, we didn't hear a thing. Not a thing. Judging by the look on that guy's face, I'm gonna trust that he called down. <laughs> Is there any other trucks up there, do you know? Yep, there's one more. He should just be finishing loading on the way down to the hammer now. Okay, thanks. Scary stuff sometimes. Can be. Sorry about that, but I'm in a hurry to make it get dumb, so. There you go. Uh, that's all right. We're all alive still. It's all good. See? He is in a hurry and said sorry. So, Six down. pretty much admitting guilt there for not calling. But uh, that's how fast it can be over, though, eh? One missed call. That's all it takes. We take radio calls very serious on the logging roads or in the Rocky Mountain Trench, so they take a while to stop for sure. They ain't just stopping on no dime. Commander! Commander! This is Shane. One of the best operators they got out here. All right, we'll see how melting that road is. See what she looks like. Jeremy and Shane will prep the road for the next round of trucks, set to arrive in a couple of hours. So in the entire block, this is the only spot that I foresee any trouble, is right through here. Oh, yeah. That road's draining right onto it. Yeah, you have to get the snow off of it. Melting snow has transformed a one-kilometer stretch of road into a massive mud pit. Work your way back, maybe. Yeah. I'll get you to push with this, eh? Yeah, I can do that. I'll run the cat, push snow back off the road into the ditch. He'll come back with the grater and, and smooth it. Use your better judgment there, bud. Pushing the snow back into the ditch will prevent it from melting onto the road. This is only my second day on a grader. The last piece of heavy equipment for me to learn to run. 
you're pro now. Oh yeah, I'm total pro. <laughs> Road's looking pretty good now. Right at the 11, there's a freaking sinkhole in the road. No, no, no. Right at the 11, there's a freaking sinkhole in the road. On to Taddy. I think things are going good. Something will blindside you. Yeah. I just really want to get this block done, man. With the next round of trucks set to arrive in a matter of hours, the block road is wasting away. Yeah, there's a big hole in the road. How big a hole? Garbage can lid. Oh, yeah? Five feet deep. Really? And it's eroded underneath. All right, let's roll, man. It needs to be dealt with now. Otherwise, oh, yeah. we're not hauling tonight. It's right in the middle of the road. You cannot miss it. Are you sure? Right here, yeah, oh, yeah stop right here. Holy smokes. Yeah. Wow. That's a pretty big hole right there, man. Didn't even know it was there until the snow started melting. If you don't fix it, somebody's going to get hurt first and foremost. There's water flowing under this road here through a culvert. The culvert has failed. There's a hole in it. So now the road has fallen into the culvert. Not good. The sinkhole needs to be repaired before the last loads of the winter season can be hauled off the block. Hey, are you comfortable on tackling this on your own? Oh, yeah, no, I'll be fine. Got this neighbor up to me and, uh, yeah, no, everything's good. Jeremy calls on veteran excavator operator, Jared. We know he's got the experience and he can handle it because we got to move wood. Now's the time and we're running out of time. Hard for an old guy like this to get down. Always got your steps full of mud. OK, oh, whose hard hat is this? <laughs> oh, my, if you'd have dropped a steering tire in there, yeah, would have been not so good. Anyway, I'm going to go and dig. I'm just seeing how far the hole goes out, how wide it is. It's kind of like a dentist. You gotta keep going out the hole till you find out the edges. And then once you get the edges, then you can see how deep it is. Okay, looks like it was just this one spot. Jaren, close to 70 years old, still up there kicking ass. My generation's weak compared to the old boys, to put it that way. It's such a good thing that they found it today rather than tonight when the trucks are hauling. If you have one wheel that drops in on the front, it brings the truck to a real stop. And your logs don't stop. They just keep on coming. Then you have a worse scenario. Good that we saw this, otherwise it would have been really bad. Usually I just go back and forth, pack it with the tracks. Make sure that there's no big rocks sticking out or anything like that. Every problem that comes up when you knock it down is a sense of relief. Ziggy, you still out here with Back on the coast. The hunt for high value timber at the Narrows continues. Yeah, I'm quite a ways down the canyon now. But uh, if you're done that side, there's nothing there. Just feel free to jump across. Yeah, so I'm down as far as your first banner here. And then I'll look on the other side when I get up top. Yeah, I just uh, do regular checks if that's OK, just by yourself there. That's a rotten hemlock and a real nice cedar. There are times where you'll walk for an hour and a half, see nothing. Sometimes what we find is a whole bunch of really low value material on the hill that just we can't harvest. And other times we find what we call honey holes. Oh, ho, 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 come take a look. Yeah, that white log laying there. That's one that would have just fell over the bluff. The crew at the gravel yard couldn't have got it. 
where the honey holes are. We're most likely to find value timber that was missed. Oh yeah, baby. This is one we want. It was fell and left. So we're gonna grab it. Hello, S64, Builder Mark. Yeah, we copied. You're done up there, right at the very bottom of the canyon. There's one big one I'd like to grab. Just got one more here, we'll come your way. Everything okay on the instrumentation there, Marco? Yeah. Something's banging on the right pedal. Is it when you're putting right pedal in? No. It's totally random. There it is again. Just one bang. Bang. On the line with it? No, no, not at all. A little rumbling. Tell where there's definitely buzz in it. Okay, nice. Let's take a boop. Hey, Johnny, I'm getting a banging in the right pedal. Um, it's not the left pedal. My feet are not on the brakes. It's just every now and then bang. I can feel quite a sharp rap in the right pedal. Oh, boy. We're going to take a look. See you in a minute. Okay. Dried bearing, Johnny. Right there, right pedal only. Back at the Narrows, a mysterious banging in the cockpit has grounded the S64. Which bearing is it? You know your pedal adjusters. Yeah. Exactly what it was. Every time I would minutely move I the pedal. I just pedals. held it backwards and sprayed the out of yeah. it. Okay. All right, good find. A control rod attached to the back of the right foot pedal needed to be lubricated. Just getting a little grotchy. It's nothing serious, but nothing to go mayday about, but something to take a quick look at. Starter. Oil. Two. Seconds up. Starter's gone. All in the green. All in the green, sir. Bill and Mark head over to meet Sig back at the honey hole. I'll wave my hard hat for you, Bill. Uh, as I'm right above the turn, turns right below me, I'll watch the sun. Okay, probably right hand turn here. There they are there. See them on the road? Yeah, I'm on the road. The 64, it's just absolutely remarkable aircraft. They're literally jet engines that produce 9,000 horsepower turning those blades to lift those logs off the hill. SIG has tagged a massive cedar for flight. Yeah, just down on the tree line right directly below me. Okay. But you're kind of playing a bit of Russian roulette because it's too big for him to pick up, he won't pick it up. So you actually just probably cost you three minutes of a helicopter time, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a lot when you're paying better than twelve, thirteen thousand dollars an hour for the machine. I got blue paint on my side, off your nose, straight off your nose. Now. First prize, if you can get a bingo. Big money if everyone was like that, eh? Do you know on Sunday when you go to bingo at the church and you get a bingo, well, and how excited you are? That's what a bingo is. <laughs> we get a log that's just the perfect weight for the max of the helicopter, and we call that a bingo. Wow. <laughs> Back on to Toddy. 
The sinkhole repair was a success. Yeah, we're finishing the block right now as we speak. And the last round of trucks are making good time. Got happy truck drivers, a happy loaderman, a happy supervisor. Yeah, it's all smiles from here on out now. I get to go see my family. We're going to wait for the next block now to finish the study and to see what the future brings. I'm out of here! Jeremy's side done pretty well. They were able to get all their wood hauled in. 300 kilometers away. Thank you for letting me come out. Well, hey, appreciate it. Because uh, any help, good help, right? Get there a little bit. That's what Kevin watched the last loads leave the block after five months of winter logging on the holder. Oh, hey, good to go. I don't think that. Feels good to watch the last load. How many trucks are here? Two or three. Looks like you got too many trucks there. Uh, I guess so, guys. It's hard enough. With just enough logs for one more load, a hauler will have to leave empty. No worries, man. Uh, I'll back up just a little bit. It's a lot better having an extra truck than not having a lot. Just so we don't have to make mess up where we're going to come an extra day to get one load. Last grapple pull right there. I think he's going to have a perfect load, looks like it. If we put that on there, we're all set. Perfect load right there. <laughs> Everything's come full circle. You know, we spent weeks building this block up, and now we're tearing it all down. With the last loads and machines headed down the hill, the final step is deactivating the block. We're gonna do a total rehab of the whole road. Fit. Get her done. We need to take the bridges and culverts, those all out. Yeah, keep going. Make it look like there wasn't any road there. Oh. Yeah, that looks good. With the summer logging season set to start in four weeks, the Does Joe crew will take some time off to recharge. Everybody is ready to celebrate. It's been a long season, but we'll do what we need to do to get ready for the next one. Nice up here, eh? As the winter season winds down up north, 650 kilometers south. Maybe you can uh, swing this dry one here, I guess. The Peters contract logging crew is already a week into their summer season on Statlu. You got enough there anyways, eh? Yeah. The train in Statlu, it's steep. We're high elevation. We're about 1,400 meters above sea level there. The first section of the block is a topside, so they'll be pulling trees downhill towards the yarder. Sheldon? Yeah, go ahead, Ralph. Well, these five plugging sticking up in the air, soft terrible. He's worried about his deck piles just can get higher and higher and higher. Logs are piling up on the landing. Here, let me jump in there. Because there's a problem with the loader. Oh, there you go. It works when you play with it, but not in my job. We're trying to figure out why his grapple weight rotate. And I'm not much of a mechanic. We can manually make it turn, but his buttons ain't making it do it, so. Without it, like, he can still run it the way it is, but he's going to have to beat the grapple around to get it where it wants, and it's just going to slow him down. And then yeah, we got that logging truck coming, too. If the loader's down, they won't be able to clear the logs off the landing or get their second load to the mill. We need to be working a minimum of two loads a day. Anything more than that is 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 money in the bank. I've seen mechanics buggering around with this, so I'm just trying to do the same thing and see see what happens. Calling in a mechanic would mean losing another day of work. If there's any chance I can fix it and keep us logging, lose 20 minutes rather than six hours, I'll do it. Statlu is Sheldon's first job as the boss since taking over for his dad, Gary, who passed away two months ago. 
We had this happen before, and I can't remember what he did to fix it, because I, I ran home to grab the manual, and by the time I got back, he had it fixed. Sheldon was groomed to take over the family business from an early age. I've been around this equipment since I've been a little kid. It's important to the company that I be versatile, just to keep us going in a pinch. I'm just going to have a look under your seat or see if there's any broken wires or something. So we got a wire off right there. What? <laughs> Hold on, guard. Oh. I think I might have just got it. Close it. Well, on your hydraulic lockout, there's three wires that go into it. One wire was off. Man. We're good. <laughs> OK, well, I'm going to go get my boots on and get yeah. ready to roll here. We had to get this fixed. It's not like I had a spare loader sitting there. This worked out good that it was just a simple wire off, and we're good to go. The loader's up and running, but the crew is way behind. Now to try to get caught up on all this unprocessed wood here that we fell behind on. Chuck should be here next hour or so. The logs need to be delimbed and cut to the mill specs. We hand process. So when the logs come in, they're still full length. They got limbs on it. So Chaser with the power saw, he'll be bucking all the limbs off using his bucking belt to tape out a speck. 41 feet right here. And then after they're processed, they'll go into a deck pile, logging truck will show up, and down the road to the mill they go. Yeah, so guys, now that we got the loader going, pressure's on to uh, get things done. <laughs> You sense the size of it, doesn't it? At the Narrows. I'll just trim up the end here a little bit, and uh, you've got a nice, really nice, oversized uh, Merck's log. <laughs> Sig gets an up-close look at the bingo log he found in the honey hole. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good about that one. They're not all like that, though. That is just so awesome when you can find a really high-value salvage log, and that definitely gives you a bit of juice for hiking through the next piece of brush or crawling on your hands and knees to get to the next one. Just clean the ends up and we'll get a, a good length. Yeah, that's a beautiful log. Just like selling a used car, you know, we, uh, we want to make it look as clean as possible, get that old black look off of it. Sig and Les calculate the weight of the log by using the diameter, length, and species. Okay, so let's just use 1,200. 17,000 pounds. It's big. <laughs> It'd be funny if we're flying those all day long, eh? That's probably the biggest on this project so far. We could literally grab that whole log, and the previous logger might not have had the big machine, right? So we might not have been able to grab it that way. The prize log could fetch up to $10,000 at market. It's been pretty neat there with having the crane and finding those big, big puppies. And yeah, it's been pretty cool. It's a dinosaur egg. Yeah. Statler. Go oh, here. Okay, sounds good. I'll piece one together for you. After a grapple malfunction slowed production, the Peters crew was able to process enough wood to make their second load of the day. It feels good. That's like, yeah, okay, well, we'll figure out how to do this, and when we do, then it's, it's rewarding to everybody in a sense, right? But the success is short-lived. What's going on there? Once again, oh, Gord is struggling to control the grapple. Oh, 
Gord gets the second load onto the truck. Shut her down! But the loader's prognosis isn't good. Water in the grapple fell out. Supposed to sit up here and she's laying down here. Wear and tear. Hey, Sheldon! That boulder in the grapple fell out! Hopping just as I finish loading the truck. Got lucky there. Well, we're on a standstill. Hey, Ralph. Yeah, go ahead. I'll let you know once we get a better plan here. Things were going so well. Thought, hey, that's logging, right? Inside the boom is a small motor that powers the grapple's open and close functions as well as the rotation. Yeah, that one off, Sheldon. Okay. To access the motor, Sheldon and Gord need to loosen the hydraulic hoses that are attached to it. Okay, let's get that one right out of there. I'm not a mechanic, but from the amount of times I've been around the mechanics working on these things, you get to know the ins and outs of the machines. Well, it's just broke. This was the culprit here. There's one on either side that holds the motor in place like so, but it either these came loose and it fell through or it's just worn these right out and dropped down. Yeah, it's frustrating. Very frustrating, actually. We're right on standstill with this thing. We gotta kind of be as gentle as we can because there's O-rings in there, eh? On Statlu, Sheldon and Glenn work out a plan to bush fix their 30-year-old loader. Well, it's just gonna be one foul hair drop though, right? Okay, yeah. And this one I'm gonna go up so I can stay away from that one. Okay. Glenn will weld the broken plate that holds the grapple motor in position. Well, the fun begins. Glenn's quite versatile in different areas. At one point when logging went downhill, Glenn picked up welding. So it's handy for me if something cracks or breaks. It's a good enough weld. Hopefully it'll last for a while. Go with that. Okay, sure. The hydraulic hoses are reattached to the motor. Such an awkward spot. Gord fires up the loader to see if the weld holds. Try to hold it closed a bit, Gord. Try it opening, Gord. We're not a big company. We're not sitting with millions in the bank or nothing like that, right? We need to be working steady, right? Or else nothing moves. Yeah, keep rotating one way, Gord. Okay, other way. I think we got her. Sounds good, man. Thanks, Gord. Well, that's success. With the loader up and running, Gord heads back to the landing to move logs. Okay, I'm gonna get booted up. Hopefully, Glenn's fix can keep us going for a while. Sheldon will join the crew on the landing and help process wood for the next truck. Son of a Well, that didn't last very long. What do you say? That didn't last very long. Did it fall? Oh, I can see an O-ring right there. The weld didn't hold. Sheldon is running out of options. Okay. 
Yeah, we're doing more damage right now. Exactly it, man. Not good. I'm running the company since my dad passed. It's had its ups and downs. My dad was more straight to the point. We butted heads quite often. I was young, had my own ideas on things. Well, my dad, he, he knew how it was supposed to be done. Nowadays, I'll think about it in the way I would do it, then it would be, well, what would he want to do in this situation? We tried to keep it going, but it's just getting progressively getting worse. So we're just going to stop, get a mechanic. If we keep going, it could be a bigger problem. At the Narrows, the S-64's power is paying off as loads of big logs are trucked down from the landing. It's pretty amazing when you think about how much effort it was for each one of those individual logs to get from way up there to right down here. That's just so great to see after everything that's gone into this job, right? contain the wood with loom sticks so we don't lose it. We've got well over a million dollars worth of logs in the water there. Getting in down to the beach is one of many steps till it gets onto that log barge and finds its way to market there. Battle's not quite over yet. A barge is scheduled to arrive in three days to transport the logs to Vancouver. We're really crossing our fingers that everything's gonna work out all right in the end. Ready to roll. We want to get to that next job as quick as we can. Next time on Timber Titans. We got a forest fire going. Worst case scenario, we get dropped in here. We're just receiving the log barge here to start loading our wood. Until we get this wood sold, we got no money back in. Winds are blowing really hard today. The faster I can get that thing loaded and out of here, the better. Get out of there, dude.